Well, hello guys. Welcome, welcome. Um, this is be this is gonna be my very first podcast that I am not not first, but doing as a group with uh my friend, one of my good friends, Anna, my other good friend, Mr. Curls. Uh we want to do a podcast together where we kind of investigate some mur- murder mysteries, some some murders that happen, some killings. Uh so we want to deep dive into those cases and one of the cases that i am very interested in and that just came up from a tv show uh about yolanda yolanda salvador that murder selena um selena was a famous singer back in the early 90s we started in the late 80s uh so we're gonna go over selena uh and her past by her father her family of of the group Selena y Los Dinos. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Uh, but first, Anna, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, guys. Hi. I'm Anna. Sorry. Sounds really bad, but I went last. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Sound like this. So, Anna lost her voice the night before. So, uh, so yeah, so this this is gonna be a fun first time podcast on my channel. Um, but thank you, Anna. Um, this was also your idea as well, and I'm I'm happy to kind of partner up with you for this. Uh, all right, Mr. Curls, go ahead and introduce yourself. All right, cool. Just finished. Um, yeah. So uh, Mr. Curls here. Yeah. Um, been doing podcasts for a while and you know they brought this idea up about doing some true crimes and whatnot so excited to be here excited to be a part of it and excited to break down our first case so to speak yeah so okay i gotta get used to this button thing um but yeah so uh growing up um my family introduced me to a lot of different types of music and um and one of the artists that they uh introduced me to was selena and um she was a beautiful woman she was very beautiful amazing voice um i guess what kind of also introduced me to selena was the movie selena about uh about her growing up becoming a singer how her father was um it, it was very 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 sad of what happened to her um, so with Selena, she, she was very famous for, uh, I'm probably going to mispronounce this, so I'm sorry, whoever's listening to this, uh, Tejano, Tejano music, um, which was a male dominant okay. music genre. <laughs> sorry, say it. I said it sounds right. Thank you. Um, it, it was a, it was a, uh, male dominant music genre, um, and with her, Selena and her family, her, her uh, with her dad, even even with her dad's past when he, of his group, um, growing up uh, with with the, I guess the Mexican culture, um, it was like if you were a Chicano or if you were just just pretty much not Chicano or whatever, uh, like there was a lot of pushback. But with her group, uh, they were refused across venues in Texas, so. They lived in Texas, and um, it was a struggle, a struggle just just to get known. And little by little, people started enjoying because they started changing up their style of music. Uh, up until as they got older, and Selena was got famous, and her and her siblings. Um, as she got famous, uh, and start start blowing up, Selena started having like her own, I guess, uh, how you say, it, uh, her own boutique her own clothing line and she had uh, a fan what's that what do you say sort of like that fan base but like a um oh man oh the fan club fan club yeah fan club yes, sir. yeah so uh so there so with that fan club the people that were in charge of it was uh Yolanda and her niece they were in charge of that and as you guys know um I'm not going much detail about a lot of Selena's past, but Yolanda is what we're going to be discussing about because there was a doc or like an interview of Yolanda. Because so Yolanda's, uh, her parole is coming up next year. 
And year. this year is 2025. Is when is when um her parole comes up, where she's she's uh able to go on parole. Ooh. Yeah, that's crazy. She she was, she served thirty years in prison. Um, because she was convicted in ninety five and maybe. Yeah, she was. Yeah, it, it did the like it didn't last that long. It was pretty much like the way they that that it happened and way they they just like pretty much talked about in that show was like was like hey yo you shot her you were there and there's really like no other way to explain it because you're the only one with the gun and you shot her and it was like i think, right. I think it lasted like two like less than two weeks girls do you, do you remember what was two weeks what'd you say uh the trial of yolanda yeah, so that's that was a big thing that they were um, talking about at one point was uh, one of the prosecutors were saying that they wanted it to be like a slam dunk case, mm-hmm. which in reality it was from face value, right? There wasn't yeah. anything else pointing in any other direction of like, oh, who killed her? How did it happen? Boom, we have both, both pieces. So the prosecution team was kind of just like, okay, we can have this done in two weeks and it should only take the, the jury about two hours. And then we can just close this case. Everybody gets some type of resolve in a situation, but yeah, very quick. Mm. Yeah, it, it like that. The show is just like like we all knew. Everyone knew. It doesn't matter what mm. how when you were were born, how what generation you were grown grown up in or raised in. Um, everyone know who Selena was um the music her music and all that but yolanda was like it pretty much everyone hated her because like like uh it, it, it the what especially in the movie how the movie described how she was was like to me like i felt like she was like obsessed with her but uh mm-hmm. with 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 her explaining her side of the story was like she was my best friend and there's things i knew things like secrets and we'll, we'll get to one of those secrets in, in a little bit. But she was like, I'm going to take Selena's side over her dad. Her dad, like, I, I knew her dad was very, like, controlling. Like, I I don't want you wearing this. I want you seeing this way. Uh, and this, how, this is what your sleep is going to be doing in the band, blah, blah, blah. And um, it was it was sad. I did, I did some, um, did some real research on her dad. Her dad, like... Um, owns everything, the name, the her company, and all that. So when um when Selena passed away, her husband Chris Perez, uh, pretty much kind of like took in everything. But uh, during like pretty much like you know you're grieving, you're sad, and and and, and like you're lost because your partner is gone, your your world is just is just done, right? Chris Perez, uh, her father went up to Chris Perez and pretty much said, hey. Sign over everything. It's my daughter. That that her stuff is mine. So Chris Perez pretty much gave everything to her father, signed everything over, and um, Chris Perez just recently was trying to make pretty much like a like a mini series about Selena, it's like a whole new TV show to explain like more details and go over more things about Selena, and her father shot that down. And then that's when a new TV show came out. I think a year or two ago. Um, that was pretty much supposed to be Chris Perez, her husband's idea, and her father took it. So, uh, um, I, when I when I read about that and learned about that, I was like, "Dang, okay, um, that's crazy. That's that's you know pretty messed up. Like, that's her husband. Um, so yeah, that's something that I learned. Um, Anna, do, do, do you want to go over anything about what you learned and? And read up on. Do you think that everything Selena left should have gone to the husband? I I think so. Yeah. What do you think, Mister Curls? Yeah, I think with that, it's it's tricky, right? Especially when you're the dad, and you know that's your blood, right? Yeah. It's hard to say. Oh, I'm gonna leave it over to this guy, even if he was like the best guy in the world, and you know everybody thought highly of him, right? If I was in a similar position, I would 
want to not control the assets, but like I would, I would want to, I guess, look over it more. Right. I wouldn't want mm. other people to have it because you don't know people's intentions at that point. You know what I mean? So like right. the husband could have done and, you know, sold off rights to some random company or some shit, make some money and fuck over the family. Um, right. But of course, in the same you know, breath of that, I don't think the dad should just deny everything people would want to create. Right. So if the guy wanted to create a series, you know, honoring his daughter. I think he would be rightful to do that. You know, you should have some type of say, um, and not just hold it down and basically have it hostage. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I agree. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and I agree too. Um, and it's, it's, it, it's, it's tough, you know, um, of that situation of what happened to her. And then, you know, with the father, you know, pretty much wants all the assets, wants everything. Um, so, with the way her father was, I don't know if he's still the same way. Um, so going on to 1995, like, let's say like a week, I'm not, I'm not gonna get all the dates correct, but the week of, of what happened of her murder. Um, so her father started receiving calls of fans stating like, Hey, you know, I gave money, but I'm not receiving what I'm supposed to receive of being part of this fan club. So he was like, you know, pretty much question like what's going on, you know, it's like, it's pretty much like saying like, I'm putting money, I'm part of Mr. Curl's fan club, I'm, I'm like, I'm promised a gift box that has a t-shirt and like pencils, a notebook or whatever. And it's been months or weeks and I haven't received it. You know, I'm going to contact, you know, the, the customer service. Like, hey, why haven't I received this? So that's pretty much what the fans were doing. We're contacting the family like, hey, I'm not receiving this, blah, blah, blah. And, um, so her father started investigating, like, what's going on, and, um, she, he discovered that Yolanda was pretty much, he was thinking that he was, like, was part of an embezzlement, that more than $30,000 of four checks, and they are gone, between the fan club and Selena's boutique. Were you going to say something, Anna? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh. No, okay, okay. Um, so he had a meeting with uh, Selena, her sister, himself, and Yolanda. Pretty much saying, hey, Yolanda, where is everything? And she was like, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and what's crazy with what Yolanda was stating in the show was pretty much like, I was pretty much done at that point. Like, I I don't know why he's questioning me. Do you remember that, Mr. Curls? Yeah. So that whole sequence was actually pretty interesting. So, mm-hmm. you know, I've been familiar with certain elements of growing up, right? But, I mean, most of it was just watching the movie, right? That was mm-hmm. a lot of what I knew. Um, I didn't really know a lot of the whole, you know, little details so the whole embezzlement thing that popped up and immediately when they first started talking about it i was thinking, oh this all makes sense now she must have been stealing money from them and you know the family has a right to get pissed off about that because why are you stealing that amount of money or why are you stealing any amount of money like that's crazy um what i was shocked to kind of find out was that there was no evidence of Yolanda ever taking any of it. Mm-hmm. And does that mean she didn't? I I don't know. <laughs> I feel like she might have still in some way. I don't know if they funneled it a different way and was just sneaky about it. Because, you know, eventually what Yolanda ends up doing, you know, nobody's seen coming, right? So it just, it still got to me in a way that, I still believe that she was still doing something kind of funny. I just, and they just never were able to prove it. Um, she never got charged with anything with that. So 
the family could have just been completely wrong and who knows if they didn't even approach her about it or if they did more research beforehand possibly that yeah. maybe it wouldn't have pushed her down this path of being crazy i don't know but yeah it was wild yeah, to find out though what's up what was that anna what happened what happened I said I wouldn't put it past her. Mm. Yeah. But so yeah, so in um with the movie in the movie they they pretty much was showing that she w used the money or whatever she was getting like she was pocketing and they uh I remember one of the scenes in the movie was like they the fan club wanted to get her a gift. So they gave you you they gave you Londa the money because Londa's like, "Hey, um I can take the money and I can go and um, purchase a gift for her. And she bought a ring. That's what the movie explained. Um, and uh, I guess also there's, there's supposedly there's proof of her like from past companies of like forging money or taking money in. And that's why they fire, uh, pretty much fired her. Right. Um, yeah. So I, I, was that the movie? I think it's the movie or explain the password or was it was in the uh the the series that we that we watched i can't remember but yeah that's what that's that's pretty much was supposedly her past and i think they don't even yeah i don't think they talked about that about her in um uh, the trial of yolanda um so yeah so they had the meeting um and Yolanda was pretty much just like looking at Selena and Selena was looking at her and and uh her father banned Yolanda from like hey you're done you you know I don't want you near my family you're banned you're done yeah you're done get out of here um <laughs> but Selena didn't want that Selena was telling Yolanda like hey um I don't want you to go you're my best friend. I, I I need you around. I need you to help me. But like within that week, Yolanda was explaining. Was like, I I'm resigning from from like from from your company. I don't want, want no part of your company, your dad, your family at all, because your family treats me wrong. And Selena kept on like it's just like, hey, no, stay. I'll protect you. I will protect you from my father. Um, Yol funny. Yolanda during this time was stating that her father was pretty much like hiring people to follow her was like, you know, trying to destroy her. The reason for that, Selena gave money to Yolanda to, Hey, write the check in your name, cash it buy two plane tickets to monterey mexico so this is the thing that i was it kind of caught my attention like the first part of the of the series part one it was like an hour 24 minutes and was pretty much saying like hey you know uh my aunt is innocent yolanda stating like i i i didn't i didn't kill her i didn't shoot her right so i was like okay this is kind of like you know it was very interesting but sometimes like Oh, you're 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 trying to make us feel bad for you, blah blah blah. But the second part episode, part two, was about forty two minutes long, and it got a there's some 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 things that caught my attention, and, and it was a secret that Yolanda said that she had that she wanted to explain what happened. Um, girls, you want to explain some some of that 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 you know what caught your attention in the second part. Yeah, so I'd say the probably the biggest shocker of the entire thing was that Selena had a secret lover that nobody knew about. Yeah. Um, I never heard of that story at all. Because you would think, you know, when Selena pops up in your mind or is talked about with other people, she was just, you know, the best person imaginable, mm -hmm. right? Couldn't do any wrong. She's a sweet girl. 
you know, she's very young. She's trying to figure life out. She's, you know, destined for, you know, this status that most people can't reach and stuff. So a great family person, right? So you wouldn't think she had anything in her like that. But Yolanda was talking about how she would keep secrets with Selena. And that's how they kind of forged their friendship into, I would say, more of a family type thing. You know, it wasn't just them being friends. It was just like they were stuck at the hip, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, she had these secrets. And the biggest thing was she was seeing this doctor apparently behind the scenes and Yolanda was the only person that knew about it. And it was their, I guess you could say cord that would connect each other. Right. Cause like Yolanda speaks about too, once you start having secrets with somebody, you know, that's a whole different connection that most people don't have. Right. Um, so it's just hearing about that, the potential of it. Right. Because nobody actually knows if it was a real thing or not, right? I know there's some other things that kind of lead to it that we could probably get to in a second. Mainly a letter that was sent to Yolanda. Mm -hmm. Um, But outside of that, yeah, that kind of changes your thoughts and idea towards Selena, if that is accurate. But it's, it's tough to say. Anna, what's your thoughts on that? On that? I mean, like, what do you mean change your mind about Selena? The fact that she's having, like, an affair? Well, like I was saying when I first started talking was, you know, how people had an image of her, right? Like, she couldn't do any wrong. Right. Oh, yeah. Got you. Yeah, it's, yeah definitely. It's, well, definitely. It's like, you know... She's I, I guess you could say like the, this princess, this queen of mm-hmm. of her her culture or her of her generation, right? So you know, it's like mm-hmm. she's very innocent. She's very lovable, which she to me she still is. Like I still see that image. And when that popped up, I was like, huh, interesting. Um, I didn't know nothing about that. Um. So yeah, so like you know, I agree. I agree with curls about that, and and what's crazy, the doctor, which his name was Doctor Martinez. Um, uh, he admitted in the interview back in 2012 that he was in love with her, that they both loved mm-hmm. each other. Um, which is is crazy, and it's like, it. it like the whole point of her going to Monterey, Mexico to talk to the doctor was to help her company to expand, to like have more production of her, her boutique. And Yolanda would go with her and to meet, to meet up with Dr. Martinez. Dr. Martinez was a plastic surgeon in, in Mexico, like very popular. And uh, I guess he was to help her to like promise, hey, I'm gonna be your business partner to help your company to expand more. So that was the meetings that she was going to Monterey, Mexico all the time, was to to meet up with Dr. Martinez. But Yolanda is claiming that there was more than that, that she was having an affair on Chris Perez. Um and I I guess Yolanda was like was just trying to hold on to that secret. And her father Abe was trying to look for Selena, was trying to contact her, and he was wondering, like, where is Selena? Why is she, why, is she, you know, where'd she go? And he was trying to get that information from Yolanda. Yolanda was saying, like, I, I don't know. And she, and I, she was bothered by that. And I guess she's stating that, <laughs> that her father was sending people to, to attack her, to slice, to slash her tires. Uh, her her front windshield was broken. I guess a gun. She said there was like a bullet impacted the windshield that someone shot her window and stuff like that. Um, and and all all that was like I was gonna, like, is she trying to make her father like a mobster or something? Like you know, yeah, I get like her father was very controlled, you know, and and was like, you know, making sure everything was going right his way and like make sure everything was perfect. Uh, what what are you guys thoughts on that? on that on what she was claiming 
I wasn't surprised that she said it. Mm. I know people are capable of doing stuff like that. And it's tricky, right? It's tricky mm. because I I don't want to have any sympathy for this woman. Kind of my angle on this whole thing because I feel like most of the shit she's talking about is it's lying. I don't I don't believe most of this stuff. Mm. Um, but if you kind of put the pieces in the puzzle a little bit, it kind of flows pretty good, you know, in her case and what she's trying to defend herself on. Um, am I surprised that, you know, one, she was already accused of stealing so much money from what was right. And was going to be like, you know, a super powerful family. Right. Mm. Um, so him kind of sending people out for her and decking her or whatever they were trying to do. Right. Scare her a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't shock me at all. You know what I mean? Like I, I do believe the dad would do something like that as much of a force he was right. Not yeah. only in Selena's life, but just for the family. Um, yeah. He, he's the, he's a general over there, right? Like he's going to make sure he can protect his family and he wants to send a message. Like, you know, don't, don't fuck with the money. Like, don't do that. And the one thing I'm not buying too much with this, right? So they could have slashed tires, broke a window shield. Like, cool. Like, okay. Trying to scare her a little bit. The one story I'm not buying at all was whenever she went to a Whataburger, right? So she goes to a Whataburger because she's traveling back to Texas, I believe, from Monterey, if I'm not wrong. Um, and they go to a Whataburger. And... As soon as they get there, um, it was Yolanda and her sister. Yolanda's sister stays out in the car. Yolanda goes inside to order food, whatever. So she orders the food. She goes to the bathroom right after, kind of waiting for the food in the way. So she goes to the bathroom, and she's just freshening up, all that good stuff. And apparently two men go into that bathroom and beat her up, sort of, <laughs> kind of. Like, it didn't really seem like that based on what she was saying. Um, it could have been another intimidation factor from the dad, right? Later on, there's an explanation as to what it could have been mm -hmm. from a different angle, right? But what didn't line up was her saying that somehow nobody else, from my understanding, has witnessed two men around that area. Somehow the sister, from what I understand, watching that series, there was no explanation on her end at any point that she seen two men go out of the restaurant. Like nobody seen these two guys go out of there. Like that sounds kind of crazy. And then once again, like I said before, it's another piece in the puzzle that kind of defends Yolanda and makes it seem like a more um, logical reason for why the events kind of went into a certain direction. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and then, you know, mainly what I don't buy about that, simple thing that happened was just the marks that she had because a later point not too long after i believe it was a day or two after or something if i'm not wrong she ends up going to the hospital with selena and they kind of look over those injuries because you know yolanda went to or she was already at the motel and stuff and uh, selena wanted to take her to the hospital to you know see what's going on and she had a couple like bruises here and there but it wasn't nothing crazy Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you're saying you got assaulted in a bathroom and these dudes like beat you up and you have no marks to back that up at all. You know, if you were under more emotional distress, right. And, you know, they were saying stuff at you to threaten you, whatever, you know, then maybe it's more believable, but she acted like she got, you know, beat up and it's got a black eye just... and everything broken ribs. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, you look fine. She's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> So, yeah, I that stuff is just hard to believe from her end and say, oh, these are, you know, this guy and these people were out to get me. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think she just wanted to have an alibi. I think she wanted to have something that explained and filled in this story that she was creating, possibly just creating in her head for the weeks following or, or yeah, the weeks before leading up to the death of Selena. So 
<laughs> when she was like explaining that people were following her, like the same, I think it was like a blue vehicle. So I, when she was with her sister, Yolanda, and her sister were driving to to Whataburger, right? Uh, mm-hmm. And by the way, Whataburger, I had it twice. Uh, first time was in Tucson, Arizona. The second time was in Frisco, Texas. The second time Ooh. tasted way better than the first time. But anyways, that's besides the point right now I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> so I remember... She said she wasn't. She was driving to uh, to Whataburger, and she noticed a car was behind her. And she told her sister, "Hey, this same person that's in this vehicle has been following me." So, when you when you get your car broken into, you're gonna cur- like call the police, right? And they're gonna have you, you know, make a report. If your car was getting tampered with. And you know someone was falling for, for months, supposedly for months, that she stated. Why didn't you call the police? Why didn't you report this? Yeah, very true. Right, Anna. So, what? What in this situation? What would you do? And what do you think about her claims that that like people were following her and like tamping with her vehicle? Um. Well, if that happened to me, the first thing I would do would be to call the police. Like. Um, like I would okay. wait. <laughs> I thought we lost you. <laughs> I was about hello. to say, and yeah. then, and then. <laughs> oh, she left. Oh, she hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then, are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I said, guys, uh, she lost her voice the, the night before, so um, that's why she's not talking as much because uh, her like, it hurts to talk. But um, we'll get we'll get back to we'll, we'll get back to that uh with her. Hello. We'll, there we go. All right. There. There. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I would wait and see if it was like. A consistent thing, and then I would call the police. Mm. Um, <laughs> I think that she's trying to make it seem like she has like the most issues out of everyone there. It's like the Struggle Olympics. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I think, <laughs> but she was. She said she was afraid of her dad, of Selena's dad, and so like. I I wonder if she was trying to make a point like the police was like also friends with her dad because like I said she yeah. tr- she was trying to make her dad look like as a mobster. Yeah, I know that her dad, you know, Selena's dad Abe was like very, you know, I guess scary. But I wouldn't think he's like to the point where like hey, I also control. Um, fuck, what part of Texas they said they live? I can't remember, but like you know. In charge Corpus of this Christi. Corpus Christi, there Corpus Christi, of uh, police. Yeah. Um, so with all that, so let's let's kind of back it up just a little bit. Um, she was so afraid of her dad that she purchased a gun. Yes. Um, and she explained that to Selena, I believe, like a few days before the shooting, and she told Selena, like, hey. I bought a gun. And she's like, hey, no. That's when Selena's like, I will protect you from my father. You don't need this gun. So she re- she went and returned the gun. So if, you know, that's what that's the part. I was like, hey, you know, like, why aren't you reporting the po- to the police that what you believe in so they can investigate something? Of like, why is this woman keeps claiming that this man is pretty much putting a hit on her. Like, why? Why is this man doing? Like, why she keeps reporting this? Um. So, as she she returned the gun, um, I think at that point, curls was after that situation in the bathroom. I believe she went to go purchase that same gun or that that gun again. Mm-hmm. And. Um, the night before she booked a hotel, Selena, uh, she told Selena, Hey, 
I had the documents that you want. So Selena wanted documents from Yolanda. Um, even after Yolanda was like saying like, "Hey, uh, I'm I'm done with your family. I, I that's it. It's over." Um, and she she, she like this is what was another thing that kind of um kind of confused me was there's a re resignation le res blah, resignation le letter that she typed or created to give to Selena. I I think a lawyer or someone had it or was trying to help her create that letter. Do you, do you remember that part, girls? Yeah, so the resignation letter apparently came from Yolanda's lawyer. Mm -hmm. But the kicker to that is there was no signature of any kind from that lawyer on there. It was kind of just say, oh, it's from me. Okay. So in my eyes, because the resignation letter, it's an interesting curveball that yeah. throw in there. But still, I don't think it has much relevance to anything. I think Yolanda kind of just had that like up her sleeve. I'm like, oh, see, I wasn't obsessed and crazy. I wanted to get out of this lifestyle. I have this letter. So why wasn't that either delivered earlier? Why wasn't this signed by an official lawyer? Like, what? There's a couple discrepancies with it. Yolanda still claims that Selena seen that letter and she was the one that was still trying to actively make her not quit, mm -hmm. which I find to be a, a crock of shit, in my opinion. Um, because the whole narrative of Yolanda being obsessed with Selena, Yolanda was trying to come at this weird angle that gave me the energy that she was trying to make Selena the one that looked somewhat obsessed with her. Yeah. And not only do I find that to be ridiculous, but I think she created that in her own mind because one, she was already somewhat obsessed with Selena. Yeah. And two, she loved all the attention that she got from Selena on top of it. So she created this narrative to be like, oh, see, I was important to her. This is why this was going on because she I, she was important to me. I was important to her. We were, you know, best friends and shit. So, yeah, the resignation letter was crazy. Um, I I kind of want to see like I want Abraham to get to get interview. You know, someone interview Abraham like you know, talk about his family, talk about his oh, yeah. kids. You know that that's something that I would love to hear and see. Um, as you're talking, like as you're discussing, like that she was making Selena look very obsessed over her. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, th this is my 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 view. What if Abraham Abe was like trying to protect Selena from Yolanda? Like he knew, like, but it's like he was in charge of everything, and if he was accusing. Not if he was accusing Yolanda for embezzlement of their company. It's like he knew something. And like why you know, if he was calling Yolanda, but like like why was he doing that? Like well, like he knew something was up. Um mm -hmm. he just didn't trust her. Like it's like it's like um you know, a lot of us has that type of ability where like we can feel something from someone, like we're not getting that good vibe from that person, like we don't trust them. Um, so that's probably what he got, you know, but anyways, um, you know, off topic, well, still on topic. Um, so the gun that she, she repurchased, uh, she, she purchased again. Um, so the night before of the shooting, Selena went to meet up with Yolanda and she wanted documents for tax purposes. And Yolanda told Selena that, hey, everything's in my truck. Um, I I can't remember that, remember that part. I can't find it in my notes. But I remember she stormed off. I remember off. that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So can you put, like, can you explain a little bit more about that? Because I remember she pretty much stormed out. And Chris was with her. Chris went with Selena mm -hmm. that night. And in the box that Yolanda gave to Selena was pretty much the same papers 
that Yolanda already gave to her. That's what Yolanda explained it. And Yolanda was like, well, stay like, I don't have anything else that you need from me. I, I already gave you guys everything. I don't know what more information you need. So if you can, Chris, if you explain a little more about that, that yeah. part. <clears throat> so, yeah, this is another element. Like I keep saying throughout this whole podcast, right? Another piece of the puzzle that fits to Yolanda's narrative. Yolanda was there in that motel. Like you said, Selena and her husband did show up. Selena's talking to her. She's like, I need the documents, whatever. That's when Yolanda's trying to explain, you know, I'm not I'm not working here anymore, whatever, I'm trying to quit. And that's when Selena was, No, you're not doing that. Like, we'll figure this out. Don't, don't, don't. And she wanted the papers though, right? Her doc uh, her tax papers. She wanted to get that stuff going. For some reason, she trusted Yolanda to have all that stuff. I don't know why to this day that she would ever want to have her exactly. in control of that at yeah. all. Um, it was very strange. That's why that's another theory in my brain that, you know, I don't think, you know, Selena 100% trusted her with all that. I think Yolanda kind of forced her hand and manipulated Selena and making her trust her enough to give her shit, right? So, so uh, Yolanda got have some type of more control over Selena. Um, but I digress. So Yolanda is explaining, like, if you want your tax papers, they're in a briefcase outside in my truck. The truck's unlocked. Go get it if you want it. What doesn't make any sense is why would Selena just accept the box that was in there, go to the truck, and then leave with her husband, and then Selena realizing, oh, wait, these are the papers that I need. That whole statement of what Yolanda was saying completely fell apart in my eyes. Why would she take the box and then not take what's actually the stuff that she needs out in your truck? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And then, you know what I mean? What I believe happened was Yolanda said her papers were in that box. They might have had some type of argument in some way. And then Selena left with that box thinking that's what the stuff was. She probably didn't even check it because she was so irritated, right? She was like, I'm just going to take the box and leave. My husband's waiting outside. We got to go. So on the way home, that's when she found out these are the papers. That's what I think makes way more sense. It wasn't Yolanda saying to go outside to go to the truck. That's bullshit. That's another thing that Yolanda can use to kind of cover her own ass. Yeah. So, mm. and Yolanda knew. Okay, well, once she finds out those aren't the papers, she's going to come back to me. And then the next day, we it becomes tragic. So, so, Anna, and and I, I want you to kind of, kind of help us with this manipulation, manipulating, you know, is a thing in the real world um to me selena was a very down-to-earth person she was very kind so of course you know your father if your father's telling you like hey this is what i think is is good you should do this and that blah 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 sitting with a mom your mom's going to be there for you he's going to help you and you're you're going to use that kindness because you know your parents are going to help you so the trust with her father I know it's there. It's there. Her father helped her with everything. But let's look at Yolanda. If the truth behind both Yolanda and Selena were best friends, I see Yolanda using Selena for a lot of things. And what's crazy, too, is that um, so yeah, how Yolanda and Selena met was through the niece. The niece wanted to go to a concert of Selena. And there were big fans, right? And Yolanda went... And I guess y'all didn't know what type, like, or not type, but what, who Selena was, what type of music. So that first concert, she fell in love with her music. And there's a lot of us, you know, we fall, fall in love with artists that we never heard of. The first song we hear, like, oh, this, this artist is really good. I love their music. I'm going to listen to more of their stuff, right? And um, I guess you could say there's, there's like a, a meet and greet and... Selena, I guess, and Yolanda connected. The niece connected with Selena. And uh, the niece and Yolanda created this fan club. That's how everything happened. So, uh, going to the whole part of, like, Selena was is very down-to-earth, very kind. Do you think Yolanda used all her kindness and manipulated her? Like, hey, I'm going to help you. I'm going to... I, I created this fan club for you. 
we can expand more. There's some ideas, you know, and little by little, so it kind of pretty much made Yolanda in charge of a lot of things. So, uh, mm. so Anna, uh, can you help us like deep dive on this? Like, you know, what are your thoughts and your theories? Yeah, I guess when you put it that way, it can seem like that, but like with, I guess with all of this is a struggle. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I guess... <laughs> <laughs> um, Jesus. I guess with like all of what like Yolanda was going through and what made her scared. And then she went to Selena and Selena would be like, hey, no, it's okay. Like, you should come back. Like, like that's where I see the manipulativeness. Like, but then also Yolanda could be bullshitting, you know, trying to exactly get that sympathy from Selena. So that's where, like, I guess that's where, like, I stand. I mean, Yolanda's a piece of shit, but that's besides the point. Curls. So I have one big question. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of talk about Selena's dad, right? Yeah. What what happened with Selena's mom? I don't ever hear her talked about ever. True, it's very true. I don't know. I, okay. I I wonder if she was like, if like from the passing to present. Um, mm-hmm. and her mom's name, by the way, it's a beautiful name, Marcella. Um, or oh, or no okay. or Maricela, I think you could pronounce. No, no, it's Marcella. Uh, um, okay, I can't say it that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Mark says M A R C E L L A. Um, my mom's name, by the way, okay. uh, it's close to oh. that. It's, it's close, close to that. Spelled differently though. Um, I, I, I don't think there's any interviews. I didn't see that part. Um, I, it was just more of like, uh, I was, I was trying to find pieces like the Doctor Martinez, which we'll get more onto Doctor Martinez in a little bit. Mm. That that there was that interview but like the father whenever some stuff comes out the father is saying i um i have no statement on that like i have nothing like i don't want to talk about it um but nothing about the mom um so do you know if she was even around during all this like she had to be right or you have a very good point a very good thing that we can maybe later on another episode we can deep dive more about on the family because there's also the sister yeah. and the brother. Uh, the brother's name is AB and um, the sister's name is Suzette. Um, I'm not pronouncing the last name because I don't I don't want to butcher it, but I'm going to try. Uh, Kin, Kintania. I think that's how you pronounce their last name. Uh, I just mm-hmm. hate pronouncing people's name incorrectly and I feel like it's disrespect. But, um, but yeah, nothing about the mom. Um, okay. I, 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 it's a very good question. Like, I don't know. Um, it's just, and it's... I have a theory to connect with that too. So that's why I brought it up. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. So my thinking, right. So this is just hypothetical in this moment, right. I don't mm-hmm. know a lot about Selena's mom, you know, what kind of correlation she had to any of this. Right. My thinking is Selena looked at, Yolanda in such a nice way in a family way because it could have been the mom that she didn't have around at that time right mm. she was an older lady um she trusted Yolanda with so much and I feel like she didn't have that motherly figure and that's what Yolanda was to her I don't know if it was just a best friend type thing you know what I mean so if you look at somebody like that a fatherly figure or a motherly figure that's not actually that right which we've all had that in our life and we do trust those people quite a bit and at the height of selena's success and everything that's going on which you know most people can't even fathom how crazy that is right um yolanda was that rock in those times especially with her dad being you know so abrasive and not that he didn't love his family, but, you know, he was a very, you know, strong man, right? He, you know, he wanted to take care of other things and maybe she needed that emotional 
um, support that most men, you know, dads, you know, at least over the years, it's gotten better from what I understand and all that. But back then, like 90s and 80s, like dads were just like, go work. And, you know, I'm, I'm a stern dude. So you need your mom for that. You know, you need your mom to give you that emotional support. And your mom is typically your rock for most people. Um, so, yeah, that was my thing with the Yolanda thing and why they could have been so connected well is because that's what it was. Um, and I think that's how she was able to um, manipulate Selena pretty easily. I don't buy the fact that Selena manipulated her in any way. I think a lot of that's just bullshit. And if there could have been anything that was somewhat negative, maybe it was Selena being like, oh my God, like I do love this person, but I know it's not good for the company. It's not good for me. Because she's starting to show certain signs that I don't like and it's making me uncomfortable. Yeah. That I can believe. I. But a lot of the shit Yolanda is saying, I, I don't believe. I, I just felt like she was just trying to make Selena the, like the person that like, she got a taste of fame and money. And she's just like, you know, she can do whatever she wants. That's that's what I was getting, like, getting that feeling from from this, from her interview, from this, the series. And, you know, anyone that with a touch of money and fame is going to be, start seeing things different, be different, you know. But, um, but Selena was more for the people. She wanted to help people. She wanted, like, pretty much you could say, like, she gave people jobs. She helped people. Like, she created this mm -hmm. company, and she was creating these jobs for everyone. And um, and I just felt like that trust that she got from Yolanda, and Yolanda using her kindness, helped Yolanda go up within that company. I think it's Selena, Absolutely. was it Selena ETC or something like that? Or Selena, Selena Boutique? Um, so, you know, with that, you know, um, we we can t probably talk later in future episodes about the family and all that. Uh, we're going mm -hmm. to go on after the night of Chris and Slim going to that hotel to meet up with Yolanda. That truck that she said that she put the other box and more stuff in that truck. Mm -hmm. So, the day of the shooting, okay. Uh, we're gonna go Wait, back. Can I get into one thing really quick? Yeah, yeah. Not to cut you off. No, you're good. There's one little piece. Um, that same briefcase that she was talking about wasn't that the same one that was locked in the safe of the room? Mm -hmm. Whenever the cops investigated. Yep. Okay. 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 Because in that briefcase so was the letter. I was about to say that further proves that that whole theory of what Yolanda was saying about it being in that truck was bullshit. Because what am I supposed to believe? She went out to the truck that night and just put it in the safe? Like, shut up. It was probably in the safe the whole time. And you just made Selena grab the box. Yeah. Uh, because, like, I was going to, like, go to the whole truck. So when they got her out of that truck that that day, right? Because I think the, the standoff lasted for, like, nine hours. But we're, we'll, we'll go into yeah. that morning in just, just about in a few. That truck. So when they got her out of the truck and, you know, Whenever you get a suspect, right, you get them down, you cuff them, and you take them in, and their vehicle that they have is impounded. They didn't state anything what was inside the truck, in in this in this uh the tell all of Yolanda series, right? Why didn't they bring anything up that like, hey, yeah, there was a box in the truck, there was documents. They didn't state that. They didn't state that at all, and that's why I'm like, like yo, I'm like, hey, if there was a box in that truck. Why didn't they talk about that? Um, that's that's what I was kind of a little confused about. I'm like, okay, well, where's everything else? So, uh, so let's go back to the morning of the shooting. Um, Selena went to Yolanda's hotel room. Told Yolanda, "Hey, get in. I'm taking you to the doctors. We're gonna check your, you know, that you know, you stated that someone." attacked you right so that night now i remember that night yolanda was told selena like hey guys there, there's these two men attacked me i'm done i'm done that's why selena stormed off now i remember about that part so that's when selena went back that morning or the next morning and said hey uh you know let's go 
So, you, uh, Selena took Yolanda to the doctors. There's pictures of bruises that were almost healed. Mm -hmm. They were almost healed. So, that's when I was like, hmm, what, what, what the, what, what the hell? Um, and Selena was, was there just like shaking her head. And she's like, something doesn't seem right. It's off. Um, and I, I can't remember what happened, what happened midday after that. Um, but I think when they went back to the room, Selena was questioning her. It was like, like asking her what's going on. What's, you know, why, why, why are you doing this? And Yolanda was saying like, mm -hmm. Hey, I'm done with your family. I'm done. I'm like, like, I don't want no more part of your family. She pulled out the gun and she stated that she cocked the gun, right? And she held the gun to her head and saying, your family is making me want to pretty much unalive myself. Um, and Selena seen that is like, no, 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 don't, don't. And she turned around and Yolanda states that she didn't know what happened, that she like trying to stop her. And then boom. And that's when Selena got shot, unfortunately. Um, and it it, it kind of hurts me talking about this because, like, like I'm just getting pictures in my head of what of what's going on, all the details. She went to the front desk. There was blood streaks, pretty much going to the front desk from the room to the front desk. And Selena told the front desk, "Hey, I've been shot at room. I forgot the room number." And then she collapsed and um, pretty much she didn't, you know, fortunately she didn't make it. Um, so one of the things that, uh, that they stated at the beginning of episode one was someone heard Yolanda said, bitch, after she walked out and seen Selena crawling mm -hmm. on the ground. And pretty much they were saying like, hey, you know, it's like a hearsay type of thing, like, Someone could probably made that part up, but like Yolanda didn't really, you know, get in detail about that from what, from what I remember. But um, when she said that she, when she shot Selena, she said she never shot a gun before. Mm -hmm. But it's like, okay, then why did you purchase the gun in the first place? If you say you were scared of her father and and the man, those those mans that attacked her, um, during that that talk. Before the the shot, the y y Yolanda's family found a letter from someone that pretty much sent mail to Yolanda. The mail the the letter that y Yolanda got while she's in prison was from someone that is somehow related to Doctor Martinez. The letter stated that yes, the man that attacked you was from Doctor Martinez. So, um, girls, if you want to go in detail, I know you want to talk about that. You want to go in details about that letter. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I'll, I'll kind of backtrack a little bit before I get to the letter thing. Yeah. Um, you know, especially with the whole, the last confrontation with each other. Right. It's an interesting one mm -hmm. because yolanda's point of view she was kind of making it seem like tempers were flaring a little bit you know selena seemed very against her quitting and leaving the family and i still don't buy it but maybe selena was like oh, i don't want like in, not in a angry way or whatever right or even like with the hospital stuff right whatever you know like what's going on here this and that and what it probably was was Selena was probably just com confront like confronting her about just the hospital stuff, and Yolanda was getting pissed off about it. Mm -hmm. She probably knew like the game was over, right? Um, I can't put on this show anymore. Selena's gonna be out of my life. I'm gonna get upset. So that's when I think she pulled out the gun, right? And was like, "I'm just gonna kill myself in a flight. I can't be a if you can't be a part of my life." You're the most important thing in my life. 
you know, somewhat obsessed. And I still believe that as much as she tries to clear that up, I do believe she was obsessed in some way. But whenever she pulled out the gun and she put it to her head, you know, it's cocked, everything, she's about to do it, whatever. And then as soon as they say no and she walks out, turns her back. Do I believe, like, when she put the gun down from way from her head and be like, oh, don't leave, the gun just, like, went off? It's possible if you haven't used a gun before, like, maybe, like, your finger's already on the trigger, like, some motion, some little motion can make that gun go off, right? That's possible. I don't believe that, but I can't say that it's not possible. Mm-hmm. Um, but what kind of go against those claims from what she says from that? was a police account. And this goes back to the beginning of all this conversations that we've had about this case. There was one thing a cop said when she was in that truck and they were on a, you know, in a hostage, nego- not a hostage negotiation, but um, basically when she was trying to unalive herself in the truck, right? And they had a negotiator there trying to talk her out of doing anything bad to her or anyone else trying to get out of her truck. She had that gun cocked to her head for hours on end. But somehow nothing ever happened with that gun. I never got shot. I find that hard to believe that whenever you're in that hotel room and Selena turns her back, you make one little motion that the gun just magically goes off. When you're talking about doing this harm to yourself for hours and hours with cops, it's hard for me to believe that something bad couldn't have happened whenever you're frantic in that situation you got all these people watching you and all that so that's an interesting point to be okay well she said it just went off but she had this gun perfectly in her hand the entire time when she's outside it's very strange Mm -hmm. but the kind of fast forward a little bit now right because now we get into the trial stuff now yolanda gets to plead her case the prosecution team wants to put her away forever you know um there was, you know, that whole back and forth of everything that was going on. You know, Yolanda didn't really have any way that she was going to win that case at all. You know, it was it was pretty rough. And she deserves that, I, in my opinion. So I think she's still guilty of things. But while she was serving this time, though, right, there's a letter that's sent to her. And this letter claims that the doctor uh, sent some people to go take care of Yolanda. Why they would write this in a letter and send it directly to her while she's in prison, which could be the most incriminating thing ever in fucking history of things, that they would just send her that in jail is beyond me. And that it just seemed so stupid and made no sense to me mm-hmm. that I, I couldn't believe anything that was from that letter. What was the letter then? I don't know. I don't think it was Yolanda just writing some shit because uh, obviously something was sent to her, right? Yeah. Maybe it was one of her family members that could. I was about to. I don't. Know. I was about to state that. Like it could. <laughs> it could be one of the family members because the family members throughout the two part. Both episodes were like pretty much trying to point fingers at the father, at the family, at Selena. And now we're getting towards the end. Um, Yolanda's trying to apologize, like I'm sorry, you know. And she's saying it's it it it, it was me. I I shot the gun. I deserve to serve the time. And she's like, you know almost 30 years it's gonna be a, like next year will be 30 years like you know my family suffered from this from schools family get-togethers all functions and stuff and you know i'm I'll, you know pretty much she's saying like i'm gonna be out soon um which i think she's eligible right but it's stuff could change next year from now from now till next year stuff can change um mm-hmm. the niece at the end was like i'm i'm in between I lost my aunt. She's in prison. And I lost my best friend. Um, I just felt at the end of, of both, you know, from watching both episodes, of like, you know, what is it? You know, like you're blaming the family. 
of that your your you're saying that your aunt was innocent. There is no proof of innocent of your aunt. <laughs> like it, it's you could claim all these claims that that you you spoke about, but at the end of the day, your aunt did shoot the gun and killed Selena. Um, yeah. it, I'm I'm gonna still after this after our talk I'm still gonna think about like you purchased a gun like there was intentions for something like you let's say if something did happen to her right and she had the gun she was gonna shoot the people that attacked her but holding the gun to your head and it was already cocked right and you shot her like. I, I'm trying to picture like when you're move when you're waving that gun, and you're you know you're the gun towards Selena like if you shot like you shot her directly like on back of her sh her right shoulder I believe like that like she was aiming at her no matter what and it's like it, I, I you know I can see you know Selena being afraid that there's a gun in their presence and it's like she doesn't want to see what's about to happen to Yolanda but Yolanda you know. Waved the gun, no matter what, and and still impacted her. Uh, Selena impacted Selena. So, um, but yeah. Um, final thoughts is that it was unfortunate what happened. Um, it's it's still sad to you know, it, it like when watching the Selena movie. Um, it, it it's still it's still sad to watch, and then watching this these this two pot two pot two part. Uh, <laughs> two. I'm thinking about food right now. I'm kind of hungry. Uh, two part episode. Um, you know, uh, it's just just reimagining what happened. Like it's 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 eating me up. Um, it was a very interesting series. Uh, mm -hmm. it was you know, it was it was good to kind of hear her her part on what she had to talk about, and pretty much the whole through the whole episode. I'm like, oh, that's interesting, but uh, I see the little BS there. Why no? Yeah. Mm -mm. Um, it's like you have all these documents. Why didn't you provide that during the trial? You know, so mm -hmm. why now after thirty years? Why now? Uh, yeah. But final thoughts, Mister Curls. Yeah. So I'd say you know, as a whole, you know, for some type of review of the documentary itself, I thought it was a very weird take to essentially just try to shine the light on Yolanda. At the end of the day, like Anna pointed out too, she's kind of messaging us behind the scenes because she can't talk too much. Um, no one that had the gun, she killed her, right? That's that's the facts of everything. Um, no matter what kind of story she tries to put into this narrative that tries to not make her look like a monster, she still did it. Like, there's mm -hmm. no doubt about it. And I do feel bad for her family, 100%. And it was a good point that the prosecutor brought up. I forgot his name off the top of my head. But the prosecutor for that trial, he was asked, right, like, oh, is this a good day? Or no, is this a – it was something along the lines of, is this good to win or something like that? Is this good to win this case? And then he was talking about how, like, nobody wins in this case, right? Mm -hmm. Selena's dead, and uh, Yolanda's family will never get to see her again, right? She'll never be free. And her, their name and their legacy is always going to be tainted now for what Yolanda did. Yeah. So nobody wins in this scenario at all. And I do feel bad for her family because they had nothing to do with it. And her niece in particular, right? Like she said, I lost my aunt. And like you said, DJ, I lost my aunt and I lost my best friend. And that moment, I think, really made the series pretty good just for that moment alone. Because that perspective and someone saying it, how rough of a situation it is as a whole to lose both sides of that that's you know it's devastating and i couldn't even imagine a feeling like that where one criminal thing that happens it's like there's no silver lining for you at all you lost your friend and you lost your aunt and you know kind of speeding up through the years and getting to this point where you see Yolanda starting to open up and then of course with this documentary I get why she's doing it right because she's going to be up for parole in March of <laughs> next year but does it help her case anymore now 
And in my opinion, no, it doesn't help her at all. I think if any of that was true, she's just going to have the mental clarity, like, hey, at least people know my truth. Like she claims throughout this entire, you know, this two hour runtime, you know, mm-hmm. she wanted to tell her truths. And as much as I don't believe most of it, if she is telling the truth in some way, you know, I, I hope that's out there now, but you can't get away from the fact that you killed somebody and I don't think she's ever going to get out. I really don't. I don't think this did anything to make her look better. I don't think this did anything to get people on her side. And I don't think that would convince a judge or, you know, anybody on a parole board to grant her that parole so she could be free. Yeah. It's not going to happen. She's going to have to stay there the rest of her life. And I think, in my opinion as well, that's the most safe option for her anyways. Because if she were to be released, you know, God forbid anything horrible would happen. And I'm not, I don't pray that on anybody, right? I don't wish anything bad. Um, Especially if this is just an accident of some sort, which like I'm saying, I don't believe that. But if she were to get out, you already know some people are going to want to do some harm to her immediately. Mm -hmm. So I think it's in her best interest and her family best interest. Just kind of walk away from this. And I understand they want to see her or their aunt come home, but it's not safe for any of them to do that. So you kind of bring it all together. I appreciate what they were trying to do. Um, I still think they should have just not done the documentary just for their own safety, because even the, the niece said she doesn't even use the same last name and she's been able to live a normal life because of that. But revealing all this stuff on this documentary is going to damage her of her reputation, whatever she's doing online, you know, work stuff that's going to follow her now forever. Mm hmm. And I think they should have just walked away from this because there's nothing that's going to undo it. Yeah. And yeah, I would, I appreciate their effort and what they were trying to do with this. And just as a viewing experience, you know, uh, from an outside perspective, I thought it was, it was pretty um, interesting. Some of these tidbits and some of these different perspectives, but yeah, crazy stuff. Um, And then from, from Anna, uh, she stated, uh, at the end of the day, Yolanda was convicted and served jail time. This means that there was proof beyond a reasonable doubt that she committed the crime. Now her thoughts are her thoughts, but the facts and law show the truth. Um, yeah, uh, I want to thank you, Anna. Thank you, Mr. Curls. Uh, this was really fun. Um, yes, sir. As a group, I, 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 I felt that we had some good topics to talk about. Uh, about the docu series and about Selena, and maybe in a future podcast, a future episode, we could talk about um, the family of Selena. Um, and before I end this, one thing that you know you brought up about how like this docu series was pretty much kind of lines up to kind of help try to help her to get parole. Uh, Gypsy had an interview. <laughs> oh before she uh, was eligible for parole. So, um, not Gypsy. Huh? I said not Gypsy. Not Gypsy. Um, <laughs> so that's probably something we could talk about uh, later uh, because that's that's something that, uh, there's some things that I, I see is kind of, it's kind of interesting. But, um, but yeah, but thank you guys. Uh, if you guys are listening to this on my channel, um, make sure you hit that like and sub button. Uh, that will help a lot. Um, Curls, do you want to kind of uh, put in your your channel or what you do? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, of course, you know, kind of just my whole branding and whatnot, just content creation, all that good stuff, podcasting, uh, making clips for TikTok and streaming and, you know, posting like random reviews and whatnot on Twitter. Cool thing is, so on Twitch, TikTok, uh you know, X or Twitter, you know, we're still going to be calling that Twitter forever. Twitter. Um, it's all going to be Mr. Curls. So it's going to be M R underscore C U R L Z Z underscore. 
So just follow me on any of those platforms, or I do have a podcast as well over on Spotify. It's called uh, Where's My Place? Uh, we talk about a variety of topics, so if you want to look me up on there, I'd appreciate it. And thanks again, DJ. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Um, thank you, man, the, uh, I, partnering up with me and Anna as well. Thank you guys for having, uh, you know, helped me out with the podcast, our podcast, which is called The Invested Gamer. So thank you guys for listening, and we'll catch you all in the next one. Bye.